Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. And I have um, our friends over on Instagram uh, live. Today, we are talking about the 2021 summer sunsc sunscreen recall that Johnson & Johnson just posted, uh, I would say, about eight, no, I'd say six or seven hours ago. It hit the waves yesterday. Um, the AP and the press started to talk about it today. And um, I had a lot of you ask me questions. And so I've kind of put together a live show um, that details a little bit more about this. And for many of you who are curious about uh, what sunscreens should we be using? I'm going to detail that too. So I want to break um, really in dig into um, the ingredient that was found at really high levels that was flagged. Um, why this is voluntarily uh, a, a situation where J&J &J is pulling uh, these products off the shelves. Um, there's also a CVS uh, brand product that's kind of linked. I think it's uh, probably private labeled um, by J&J. &J. And so I want to detail that for all of you. And I have, again, some uh, information I'm going to detail in this show. And I see a lot of our usual faces. I'm so excited to see Michelle on uh, Instagram and June and Karen here on YouTube. And Emily, hey there. June's on Facebook. Sharon, it's great to have all of you. Please ask away. I will be kind of juggling all of our comments and really want to um, highlight uh, one, you need to throw these products away. But most importantly, you know, these are scenarios where this is a voluntary recall, but there are a lot of other uh, products that have uh, even still harmful uh, levels of this one um, product in them. So I want to um, go into a little bit more uh, in-depth detail. So again, um, if you are um, on the if you're joining me live, feel free to ask questions, and I will um, show. Emily says hello, and Karen. So I'm playing around with this, but essentially, what I want to bring up here uh, right now is on the screen. You can see um, there is a recall, specific recall, where Johnson and Johnson has pulled. Uh, Neutrogena, specific Neutrogena products, and then there's also one Aveeno product. So I want, if you're on uh, on YouTube uh, or YouTube and Facebook, you'll see the slide. But essentially, the Neutrogena, there are five of the six Neutrogena sprays. So if they're all aerosol related. The um, particular ingredient that we need to stay away from is benzene, and benzene happens to be in a higher content. Uh, or uh, quotient in this aerosol sunscreen. So it's Neutrogena Beach, um, their Cool Dry Sport, Neutrogena Invisible Daily, the Ultra Sheer, and then the Aveeno Protect and Restore is the name. So there are yellow Neutrogena bottles and there's like, it's kind of a light blue and goes all the way to white. So, um, I um, I definitely wanted to highlight and show for all of you um, here what to be looking out for because sometimes you're not going to tune into that you know beach outdoors or whatever the name is but you're going to be looking at those labels so definitely make sure check your cars check your um, you know your kids uh, uh, medical you know medicine cabinets check underneath your cabinets get access to any of the sprays. And these are really um, kind of where we've seen a lot of people going to the spray specifically because they're easy. So I also want to show up here on the screen um, more information. So Johnson & Johnson released, and they so I, I'm highlighting, they posted on their corporate website, they have a company announcement. And it hit the you know airwaves and press releases. And basically it says Johnson & Johnson is voluntarily voluntarily recalling all lots of the Neutrogena and Aveeno aerosol sunscreen product lines to the consumer level. They say internal testing identified low levels of benzene in some samples of the products and consumers should stop using them. Um, and so they list out 
uh, the the actual items. And then they highlight a little bit more about benzene. And that is something that we're going to talk a little bit more about today. I'm going to post um, information from the CDC specifically about why benzene is something that not only is a skin irritant, can cause headaches, has hormonal disruption, but is a known carcinogen. And this is really critical when we are in you know, prime time, summertime, we're outside. Uh, my son just went to the beach earlier today while I stayed at home and worked with many of you. And it's really critical. We are trying to protect ourselves from the, from the sun, trying to prevent sun cancer. <laughs> and, you know, the, the cancer, skin cancer, cancer from the sun. And yet we are loading up our skin and our bodies with the harmful ingredients. So, um, you know, do comment down below. Let me know if you have in the past used these products or maybe use them currently. It is something that um, even if you have used them in the past, there could be some still harmful effects. And I want to highlight that a little bit more in our um, show today, because one of the things that um, I'll post here, one of the things that uh, is listed so benzene specifically works by causing cells not to work correctly. And this is really crazy because we have this skincare ingredient that is known to cause uh, the bone marrow not to produce enough red blood cells. So all on its own, benzene exposure can cause anemia. And it also is known to uh, damage our immune system it uh, changes the blood levels of antibodies and can cause a loss of white blood cells. So crazy, crazy. Um, oh yeah, so the badges is on for all of you on um, Instagram Live. You can hit the badges and support our uh, show here. So on YouTube and Facebook for all of you on Instagram, I'm posting more information about the exposure to benzene, this uh, known carcinogen that is in a lot of sunscreen products. And that's really the reason why these J&J &J products are being pulled. Um, just because they're being pulled doesn't mean that consumers are going to instantly stop using them, which is why it's so important for us to highlight this. Um, the signs and symptoms of benzene exposure, and this is not like toxicity, but exposure. Exposure meaning you're putting it on your skin, you're putting it on your, you know, you're, you're using it on your skin, you might be putting it in your hair, uh, you know, it, the aerosol nature, you're inhaling it, so we're getting it right through the respiratory passageways. There are, um, these are some of the signs of, of high level exposure. Drowsiness, dizziness, rapid or regular heartbeat, headaches, tremors, confusion, unconsciousness, and at really high levels, it can cause fatalities. Um, eating foods and drinking beverages that contain high levels of benzene can cause vomiting, irritation of the mouth, it can cause convulsions, sleep, sleepiness, a regular heartbeat, and obviously um, can be fatal as well. Now, the other thing that they talk about is direct exposure of the eyes, skin, or lungs can cause tissue injury and irritation. That's really critical when you're thinking we've got, what we're talking about are these sprays, sunscreen sprays. So a lot of times, you know, I've, I've used them way long ago, but you know, you spray and you know, you get that whole, you're not even sure if you're really covering your whole skin. And then all of a sudden it's in your eyes or it's in your friend's or family's eyes, you're inhaling it. And so it, it, you're getting a lot of exposure. Um, so they caution against that. And um, the other thing is sign, you know, these signs and symptoms, symptoms don't always mean that the person has been exposed to benzene. So obviously there could be some underlying um, elements, but most important, I wanna share with you some long-term health effects of exposure to benzene. So long-term you know, long exposure, if you are using these products on the daily or have been exposed, um, long-term exposure is specifically on the blood. So that's this whole bone marrow impact, anemia and dips in white blood cell count. Um, it also can be known for causing excessive bleeding and impacts the immune system in a way where you are more susceptible to infection. And we are still in the pandemic. And so we want to limit all of our weekend immunity as best as we can. Um, here's the other thing. Ladies, really, really critical. If you are using any type of sunscreen or skincare product, hair care product that has benzene in it, um, some women who are breathing this in, that aerosol, for many months, 
They can have irregular periods and their ovary size can decrease. Um, we don't know exactly the uh, impact on a fetus, um, but, and, and we don't necessarily know, uh, fertility elements, uh, the impact of fertility in men, but the likelihood is, is, is potentially great. If it affects women and our hormones, it, it most likely is affecting men as, and theirs. The other thing they've shown within the animal studies, it can affect low birth, uh, weights for babies, delayed bone formation and bone marrow damage for the pregnant animals. And the Department of Health and Human Services, they've determined that benzene causes cancer. Long-term exposure through benzene in the air, so aerosolized benzene, which is exactly what's been pulled here with the sunscreens by Johnson & Johnson, Neutrogena and Aveeno, if you're joining us. Um, Long-term exposure can cause leukemia um, and, a, and cancer um, of blood-forming organs. So that's really, really, really crazy friends. Um, I will say, and I'll put this back up here, if you notate on this second line here, so Bloomberg um, pulled an article from Bloomberg, their business uh, journal, and um, they posted it yesterday uh, and it popped really heavily today. A lot of you freaking out, that's why I'm doing this live. But the contamination was first flagged in May. Um, and that was by an independent lab. And so that is something where, you know, a lot of these companies do have third party labs. And so they're constantly Q, Q and Aing and testing um, their products. So this is something I just want you all to be aware of. Uh, Neutrogena and Aveeno, the aerosols are things that you want to absolutely throw away and pull from your teens' lives, your kids. Um, just get that out of your get that out of your med medicine cabinets and summer uh, beach bags. Now, the question that many of you had, and I'll go to my comments and see if I have any um, um, any specific um, questions, like Taryn over on YouTube says, is it just the spray or creams also? At this point, what we know was flagged were the aerosols. And part of it is just the way benzene uh, is the nature of benzene, it tends to be in the aerosolized, oh, hi, Daisy, uh, the aerosolized form. So it is really, really important that, oh, Daisy wants to say hello to everybody. So hi, Daisy. Okay, I can't see her a little bit. Sorry, I'm at home working, so you might see a little kid join me. Um, so that was an excellent question, Taryn. Um, hey, Pat, for all of you joining, we're talking about only the spray sunscreen. Suzanne over on uh, Facebook is curious. Basically, Johnson & Johnson's Neutrogena, five of the six aerosolized spray, um, Beach Defense, Cool Dry Sport, Invisible Daily, Ultra Sheer, and then the Aveeno Protect and Restore. Those are the six, I'm uh, sorry, the five products that have been pulled. Um, now, and Emily says I currently don't use sunblock. So this is the one thing we, we still do want to block the sun. Um, one of the things that I will tell you is that if you have good optimized vitamin D levels, one of the things that we find is that that functions in protecting ourselves from uh, radiation exposure from the sun. So making sure you're getting your vitamin D is a good way of naturally protecting your skin your skin. However, that cannot be the only resource. And so we do need to protect our, our, our faces and our skin from sun damage. Um, it does prevent premature aging. So the more youthful, supple skin you desire, um, the less sun exposure and sun damage you want to have. And many of us, if you're like me, I grew up in Florida, I'm trying to reverse that. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of my efforts here in my forties are minimizing fine lines and some of the sun spots that you probably see. I don't have anything on my face because I want to do a demonstration. Daisy, get out of there. Okay, so um, the big question is, okay, so now what do we do? So, you know, you look at your products and you read your ingredients and you see that there's, you know, a benzene. And a lot of times it'll be a really long term with benzene in that, that labeling. So read your labels, friends, do your research. Um, the EWG is one of my favorite apps. Um, I think Skin Deep is the name of it. You can grab it on your phone. I'll post a link in the descriptions below. Um, and by the way, if you're looking for sunscreens, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of these uh, today. But one of the things that's really critical is you can do a bar scan, a barcode scan. And so you can, you know, as you're shopping, check the, the Skin Deep or EW, the Environmental Working Group, EWG, 
has a phone app and you can you can find out are these ingredients harmful they actually scale and provide information on uh, each of the products and so that's a really good resource i'm going to recommend that i've talked a lot about that and in previous um, posts, but for women that are concerned about hormonal imbalances and you know repetitive long-term use, one of the things that we need to be cognizant of is the the SPF blocking, you know, the SPF um, sun blocking ingredients in our everyday skincare, and a lot of the um, particular. Uh, uh, tinted moisturizers and moisturizers have SPF in them, there may be some benzene exposure. And I do want to notate that the independent lab that identified back in May, the Johnson and Johnson higher levels than what's okay um, of benzene, there's, there's still benzene exposure in a lot of the every over the counter products. So I do want to highlight that even though there aren't recalls on some of those, they still contain harmful benzene. Hey, oh, you want to say hi to everybody? Hello. Mommy's, mommy's live right now. He's getting so tall. He's starting kindergarten for all of you who are on a lot of my lives. Five. Yes, he's five. And he uses all of these. You want to tell him, where'd you go today? Where'd you go? Beach. You went to the beach. And did mommy slather on sunscreen on you? <laughs> yeah, fun times. Um, so, okay, honey, I, okay, I will. Can you, thank you. Can you go watch your um, Beyblades, please, buddy, and take Daisy with you, honey? Okay. Um, uh, Pat says, hi, Gabriel. Look, she says, hi, Gabriel. Mom, can yes. you show them? Hmm? Can you show them? My puppy. Oh, Daisy already said hi to them. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yes, okay, take Daisy, take her, and take her to the movie room, please. Okay, so... What I was saying, I'm not Daisy. What I was Daisy. saying, go oh, Daisy. Okay, be gentle, buddy. Okay, go. Take her, take her, take her, take her outside if you can. Um, so one of the things that I was saying is um, everyday use items, you want to be cognizant of those because SPF can be in our foundations and even some of our um, you know, natural skin care that we're using. Um, so with that being said, I want to share with you what I what I use every day. What I recommend, I posted for in, uh, YouTube and Facebook, link in the description, you'll find a link to one of my favorite um, online vendors for natural sunscreens. And they've all been vetted, all of these brands, you can find the majority of them there. But I use, let me show everybody, I use um, the Josh Rosebrook. It is, and I'll post on here for all of you, I'll show you a little bit more detail. Um, no, maybe I didn't post it. Well, I use the Josh Rosebrook um, product here, and this is a uh, nutrient day cream. And so I use this nutrient day cream for really kind of my like second layer of moisturizing. So I do, you know, my uh, my kind of toner, and then I do a cream, just kind of an oil oriented cream. And then what I do is I will pump this and I'll, I'll demo. I have clean face for all of you. I do have eye makeup on, but it's this, a lot of times what I found up until more recently, a lot of these good natural mineral-based sunscreens. So the mineral is going to have zinc, uh, the, the, sometimes they're nanoparticles, sometimes they're not, but they're micronized. Sometimes they go on and it's really hard to rub them in. So I wanna demo for all of you um, how I do this. So I kind of do in quadrants. And if you see, it just rubs in really nicely. And it, I don't get a whole lot of the white left over. So that's really critical. And I have a lot of sun damage. I grew up in Florida. We used to go to the beach in the summertime for like 13 hours <clears throat> every day. The whole summer long, I had the best tan. And I don't ever recall putting on sunscreen, <laughs> Gabriel's age or even in my teens. And we actually wanted to be nice and brown. My hair was like blonde. I had blonde highlights because I was in the sun all the time. So I am very cognizant now as a grown adult. And as you can see, it's all blended in. And it comes out like this. So there we go, you can kind of see here. It's creamy. And it has the kind of mineral density. And I really flather on, like I, over here, 
I have um, had, I don't have it so much anymore, but I've had melasma here on the top of my lip from when I traveled to Africa and Asia, I had to take uh, malaria pills and the malaria caused this hyper sun uh, pigmentation, hyper exposure. The other thing I do, I always cover my hands. Here we go. Honey, mommy's not done. Oh, geez. Are you a little dude now? This is his little dude outfit. Okay. Take Daisy. Mommy, mommy will be done in 10 minutes. Okay. Go, go, go. Okay. So that is the Josh Rosebrook. This is your everyday. Thank you. Everyday moisturizer. You can use this after you wash your face in the morning. That's like my base level. Then sometimes I will want to tint. Sometimes I want to kind of brighten up my face. This is a nutrient day cream, very similar, but it's the tinted version. And I'll just show you this because it's probably easier to see. But it's got a little tint. Put some of this on. I'm getting low on my bottle, so I have to open that. But I will just do like what you do right through here. And it blends. You can see it blends so easily. So I get sometimes that double exposure or double um, layering. And I also get a little tint. It just blends with my skin tone. They have different tints. So you can also use this SPF in your tint. And the Josh Rosebrook is such, such a great brand. Um, they're wonderful. There's another brand I'll show you on the screen. The Kipris Pot of Shade. That's another product I get at... Um, at Aaliyah online, it happens to be sold out right now. I would say if you guys have any concerns about sunscreen, act now because these are going to be in high demand because of the J&J &J recall. So people today are going to be freaking out and buying sunscreen, natural mineral-based sunscreens like nobody's business, stocking up because they're freaking out that their kids are being exposed to cancer and it might affect their ovarian health and their hormone health. So. Those are a few that I, I like. The other thing for like Gabriel, I love Suntegrity and I'll post um, uh, some options up here. So Aaliyah, you can get a lot of Suntegrity products. They have, this happens to be their sport. Um, they're sold out of this right now, but they have a smaller stick that actually is awesome. I'll share with you guys here. It's their mineral sun stick. It's an SPF of 30 and you could see the ingredients are really, really clean ingredients. And um, this just kind of, you know, rubs on, you can put that on, it stays on, it is the sport version so that the sports stuff is great. If, you know, we're doing yard work, we're sweating, we're at the beach, we're sweating. Uh, and you know, we do our Atlanta beach, we go up to the lake shore. Um, and so that, that becomes really critical just to have different layers. You're every day you're out about, you're exposed to lights inside stores, you're in your car. You start with this and then when we go outside you can have the tinted uh or you know the sport they also have a primer i have this like my little travel primer and this has an spf in it of 30. um and then the other um another product that i love and i'll show you guys here Il um ilia ilia is one of my favorite um uh makeup brands and they will have I, you can't see it now, but I use like this tinted eye kind of cream. It's like a primer for the eyelid, but they also have a skin tint. And so the skin tint I will use, um, they have an eye one, but they also have a skin tint for the face with an SPF of 40. So that is um, available right now at Aaliyah as well. And those, they're amazing. And they have really, really, really clean ingredients, uh, which is great. The other thing that I use, depending on what I have, I have stuff in our cars. Brian in Texas, he's got stuff in his car. I have a whole pack that for him. They have men's versions. I'll also use Earth Mama, and they have a kids, and they have, this is really great for less sensitive skin, babies. You really want super, super clean ingredients. <clears throat> they have calendula, coconut oil, olive oil, raspberry seed oil, shea butter. I mean, there's nothing in here that is, uh, it, it, at any point deemed toxic. <clears throat> so Earth Mama, I posted a link down below as well. And they have really great deodorants. So at Aaliyah and Earth Mama, you can get uh, clean deodorants, which is another topic. So I want to answer questions specifically because I know a lot of you um, have questions. So uh, Amelda Ellis says, is aloe vera um, hella good? Oh, gel. So is aloe vera gel a good sunscreen? 
Um, aloe vera, I would use more so as an anti-inflammatory. It's a good moisturizer. It's great for after sun exposure, whether you've had a sunburn and, you know, I am notorious for the worst application. I will on myself have handprints or, you know, there's a spot that I forget and all of a sudden that's been burnt. And so aloe vera is great for the after sun exposure, but I would not recommend it. All of these have a zinc oriented um, sunscreen blocking agent. And, and that is where we get the true blocking. Um, you know, the UVA, UVB rays, we want to block all of those out. Zinc tends to be the best barrier against sun damage. And for all of us ladies, you know, this whole space, you know, that's where we see a lot of the sun damage up here, but more so right here, you know, we get our crow's feet and, and the kind of wrinkling. Um, so that that's really, really important that we, we do that. Um, so Taryn said, asks, uh, what else can we use in place of um, sunscreen? These are all really great brands and I'll share these with you guys again. Uh, Suntegrity has a whole line. They've got tinted moisturizers. They've got the sport. Uh, Josh Rose, Rosebrook is one of my favorite every day and every day you want to be wearing it. I really, you know, women 20 and older should be wearing sunscreen, but particularly as we are getting older, us ladies in our forties and over, um, we really want to take care of our skin, our decollete, the, the neck and upper chest, our shoulders and our hands, because when we're driving, our hands get, get that sun exposure. And a lot of times we're not tuned into that. <clears throat> All right. So Mariana asked an excellent question. Isn't it healthy to get our dose of sunlight for immunity? What about pure coconut oil? So that's an excellent question. Um, yes, we do need sunlight. Um, counter to what everybody thinks is that you are going to be outside fully exposed to the sun and be able to manufacture vitamin D. So sun exposure in that perspective, a lot of people are like, well, I need my vitamin D, so I need the sun exposure. It's not so much about your skin and the sun, it's about your retina and sun exposure. So for your body to manufacture vitamin D naturally, you need to have your body outside in the more early morning, <coughs> excuse me, early morning time or later in the evening is when we have our max vitamin D skin production. You get out in the sun, you have to have your eye, your retina not, you have to have your retina not um, uh, blocked. So like I wear contacts, I would have to remove my contacts. You don't wear, you know, sun sunglasses or anything like that. And I will be honest with you, I, I test people that work outside in the sun, whether they're sunscreening or not. And vitamin D levels, there's just not enough time for us to be in the sun to get exposed. So, you know, Sunlight is healthy from a perspective as you're outside, you're breathing in air as long as it's not causing you allergies, <laughs> but it's less about um, that vitamin D. I'd rather you take a supplement of good high quality vitamin D after testing it. Um, but for immunity, you know, it being in nature can help. Like for us, we love to plant and be in nature and it helps us. As for coconut oil, um, it's not, it doesn't really serve uh, the same functionality as a zinc based um, sunscreen. So, you know, the mineral sunscreens, you're going to find that they are zinc oriented and coconut oil just doesn't have that, um, those properties. So, um, so very interesting. Thank you. You're most welcome. Um, okay. So I have some Instagram questions. Um, let's see here. Oh, sorry guys. I'm working three screens. Um, Hey Whitney, thanks for sharing this. Most welcome. Uh, lots of familiar faces. I know everybody misses us on YouTube. I miss all of you. So for all of you tuning in, if you're a follower of mine or not, we're in a state of flux here. Uh, we just sold our house in Atlanta. Um, Brian got a spectacular job offer in uh, Dallas, totally different company. 15 years, he was with one company and he has already started his new job just over two weeks ago. So we are joining him on the weekend before Gabriel starts kindergarten. So we're leaving Atlanta, I think the 7th or 8th of August. And so um, 
it's just been really hectic and we just finished that home remodel. And so we finished it. And then like three weeks later, we listed our house. This was crazy. Uh, right family. Excellent question. Okay. She, uh, they asked, can you take vitamin D while breastfeeding? Absolutely. He already takes a drop a day. Yes, most definitely. And moms need to test your vitamin D because you are mega manufacturing vitamin D and it's primarily going to be housed in the breast milk. So really, really critical, critical. Mariana says, I'm so glad you're moving to Texas. Um, yay. It, it's going to be an adjustment. Uh, you know, it's awesome that we sold our house like that here, but it's not awesome to be buying on the other end. And we are, uh, we are going to be in a rental for however long it takes. Um, I'm in Austin would love an in-person consult. So I'm not sure if I'm going to where and when I'm going to set up in person. Um, but I did see somebody had a question if I am taking patients again. Let's see. Um, Wednesday, Adam said, are you taking new patients or new clients? Yes, I am. Um, I have virtual appointments up through the end of August. And then I'm going to take all of August off to get us adjusted. Um, so book now and I'll be back online probably sometime in September. Unless we find a house and then who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? So um, but that is, that's super exciting for, for, um, our new adventure, but either way, uh, there's all sorts of really great things coming here, but I wanted to highlight for all of you. I hope this was helpful. I hope you will share with your friends and family, um, especially those that you have seen or might know that are consuming, uh, Johnson Johnson, Neutrogena aerosol sunscreen, or one of the, the Aveeno product, the, protect and restore. Um, this is really critical. So it, it is very alarming. Uh, we already know that a lot of the acceptable levels of benzene are still toxic to the human body. So when it gets flagged from an independent lab back in May for having more than um, healthy levels, you know, that's even a greater red alert. So um, yeah, crazy, crazy. Uh, let's see some new comments here. Uh, Sarah Barbera wants to disagree. Super bad advice about the sun. There is a kind of vitamin D that comes from the sun that you can't get through supplements. So I would recommend, um, Sarah, you dig a little bit more into the body synthesis of vitamin D. Um, you know, for vitamin D, yes, there are, there are two core types of vitamin D. Um, and by the way, animals like my dogs and, you know, us, we manufacture it differently. But the manufacturing, the synthesis of vitamin D relies on your liver functionality. And when our livers are already bombarded by toxins, by overwhelm of cortisol, overwhelm of insulin, overwhelm of, you know, additives and dyes and things in our food, we're not manufacturing uh, vitamin D well. And so, you know, I, I do recommend people get out and exercise, but I don't recommend people actively seek the sun. Um, I, th there is, there are better ways and safer ways for your skin and your body, um, that, that I recommend, but you know, again, everybody has the freedom to do what they want. Um, but yeah, I don't recommend that for my patients. Um, you know, using the, the sun to get your vitamin D levels. Um, okay. So Tina Curley, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> Uh, ask, which sunscreen can I use for my six-year-old baby? I don't know which brand, brand to buy. So on the babies, Earth Mama, they have uh, the little blue. They have this ultra sensitive. This is so clean. Um, and it's also water resistant. And they have the colloidal um, oatmeal. And it's like there are no parabens. It's not a nano um, mineral base. It is so great. I have been using this particular brand on Gabriel since really uh, one of our first beach experiences back in Florida. And I will say to Sarah's um, comment, when we had Gabriel, he had um, some jaundice. He had, I, we had a really, a really tough time, like the first two days in the hospital with breastfeeding and everything. I was like a, a crazy wreck. And he had jaundice as well. Um, we have different blood types and that was part of it. And um, our, the recommendation from our natural pediatrician and the nurses were to go and, and sit with him in the sun. But our sun exposure with him, it was like 15 minutes. That was it. It was not like a whole day or whatnot, but that actually helped 
his body synthesize D to help push out the bilirubin. So there is some benefit to that. But again, you know, we were with Gabriel and I would breastfeed at 730 in the morning. He'd be in his little diaper and all of his clothing, you know, clothing was off and that that sun really helped his liver. Um, so I hope that's helpful, but definitely Tina, um, earth mama, I've been carrying them since day one. Like when I opened my doors in 2008, 2009, they have had packs for, they've got great products for nursing moms. They make really great gifts for, um, you know, baby showers, but they have the belly, um, stretch oil. That is awesome. It totally works. They have, um, really great skincare, like baby related skincare, it, they have one that's this orange blossom scent. Oh, so good. It's so good. So I hope you check that out. Check out the link, Tina, in my description uh, in YouTube. You'll find it. Um, and Karen, you're welcome. I'll show that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay. So um, can adults use Earth Mama? Yes. Um, they actually, oh gosh, you guys, I have packed up my whole office. So see over here these shelves right here on Instagram. You can see that. Um, this is where, this was my product warehouse. This used to be my first office where I did all my YouTube filming when we first moved here. And um, for showing, I had to pack everything up and I don't even know where it is, <laughs> but I have a whole like shelf dedicated to Earth Mama Angel Baby. It used to be called Earth Mama Angel Baby. They've condensed it, rebranded. It's called Earth Mama, but they have teas. They have, um, uh, different trimester teas for women. They have a red raspberry that all women can use. So their, their teas are really great. They have um, for adults and babies skincare. And then their a deodorant line is, is primarily for um, adults. So I like it. Um, Bill, not sure the bio Axon. Um, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Uh, so comment, comment again, Bill, um, sometimes the, the computers get on wonky. Okay. Anita. Okay. So Anita has a great question. Hey, Anita. Um, what can you use if you are allergic to SPF? So the SP, so the question is SPF is, is basically like a, 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 a number. So we label like all these different sun blocking, uh, properties, the benzene being one of them, you know, some of these other ingredients like the uh, minerals, zinc, whatnot, um, as SPF. So the question is, there's an ingredient that you're allergic to. I don't know if you have that identified. Um, but if you know specifically, then you'd obviously want to be avoiding that particular um, ingredient. I hope that helps, Anita. But the SPF specifically is just a label for what we know through testing gives us protection from uh, sun, either exposure or, you know, a lot of times it's uh, how well does it block out the UVA, UVB rays. And you can tell on your own body, like when you use different SPFs, like the lower the SPF is, the more sun light that gets in and the less barrier and the higher tends to be the greater barrier. Um, and, and then the other thing too, is how frequently are you applying? You have to reapply. That's really critical. Um, I know I've had conversations with folks that didn't realize that, that you have to reapply. And some of them will say, I feel like, um, yeah, this one, the mineral stick, the integrity mineral stick. I have the round one. They also have this cute little square one. I love the square one because you can stick it in your pocket. Gabriel carries it like he did a summer camp at an art barn outside. And so he was in the sun a lot and he would use that. Um, this is water resistant, 80 minutes. So that gives you like 80 minutes, every 80 minutes you want to reapply. And so, you know, that's the other thing too, with a lot of these products with the sports, they have the capacity to still block if you are wet and sweaty. And you know, like that stuff, the second application is it's God awful. You know, it's hot, everybody's sweating and, you know, whether that's um, effective or not is a big, a big factor. And so when you're dealing with water resistant, SPF, these, you know, these are really great. Um, and again, the, you know, the, there's that debate, the nano zinc versus non-nano. Non-nano is going to be the cleaner, um, more kind of micronized um, zinc that I like. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so let's see if there are any questions here. Do, 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 do. On Instagram, I don't think I have, I don't, haven't seen any questions. Um, so again, I'll just put this
step, let me go back to my um, screen. So the products to avoid, see here on the screen on YouTube and, and um, on uh, Facebook. So the yellow sprays, the beach Neutrogena, the beach defense, <clears throat> the cold dry sport, the invisible daily, and the ultra sheer on the Neutrogena side, they're all yellow spray sunscreen bottles. And then the one Avino is the Avino Protect and Restore. Those are the ones that are being pulled. You won't see them on the shelves at any of the stores. They won't be on discount like they, they've gotten pulled. So I hope you will check out the description below. For Instagram, this will wrap up on and be shown on my Instagram TV. Um, I have to do a little work on um, YouTube. I'll have a thumbnail that pops up later. Um, Brian's coming home tonight. Yay. So we haven't seen him in two weeks. Um, I went out there in the hopes that maybe we'd buy a house, but <laughs> six offers later, we are still houseless. Um, but it'll all work out. We're hoping that things settle down with school. So if I don't get to um, the specifics, uh, I'll do it tomorrow. But for Instagram, I will quickly cut and paste so you can grab the links. And these links, I do have to qualify. They are affiliate links, and so they support our channel. Um, but the brand Aaliyah, they are the clearinghouse for all natural um, uh, skincare and natural beauty. They are who I go through. Um, and Kathleen runs it out of uh, Colorado, and they are awesome. And I hope you support them. Um, they are wonderful. So, oh, I have one more question. I'll show it here. Emily asks, what SPF level do you recommend? So I, what I recommend are layers. So on my like daily, it's a 30. And so I have that base always, you know, as soon as like, I know the sun's really intense, I'm, I'm wearing this on the daily. And then I might, you know, layer with the 30 kind of in the spots that I want to kind of brighten up my face. Um, and then I'll, I will use a 40, a 50 and sometimes a 30. So there's just different degrees, but at minimum, you don't want to go less than 30. That's kind of my um, recommendation. And I will tell you, oops, we're going low on percentage. Um, I will tell you, I have a dermatologist I see um, because I grew up in Florida because <laughs> I was not very good about, um, you know, my skincare and um, sun damage protection. Um, you know, that's a discussion I have often with the different dermatologists that I see and they're on, on the same boat. I have some like my med spa um, doctor, she's on the higher side. She wants that full fledged 40 to 50. Um, so, you know, on the daily, if I've got coverage, I'm kind of layering. So I hope that helps. And thank you all for tuning in. I am grateful for your time. Um, do know that I am going to be working on a lot of content. It might not get produced as we're in this transition, but um, I welcome any of your topic ideas and information that you want to hear from me. Please comment down below. I read these. I read them during the live, obviously, but also on uh, the replay. So feel free to comment. I will respond as best as I can. And I'm so grateful. It's been so wonderful to see everybody. I love all these familiar faces and Pat. We just love Pat. Pat was such a great moderator. She's sending best wishes on your exciting new adventure. Dr. M, I've heard that buying a house now is quite a challenge. But yes, uh, but I'm sure I'll work out. I am grateful. And Emily, I miss you as well. And Mariana, uh, sun, hormones and weight gain. Yes, yes, hormones and weight gain. I've been talking a lot on Instagram about hormones and weight gain, but definitely it is um, out there. And um, do check some of my other content. I'll post on um the community tab, I have some free downloads about weight management and weight loss. So um, do, do look for that. Um, and I appreciate it. So it's great to see everybody. I will see everybody later. Happy Thursday. Happy July. Do protect your, um, your skin as best as you can. Make sure your vitamin D levels are high. And also, I'll post this after the fact. I forgot. I have an awesome um, skincare like supplement regimen. That's not so much about like supplements that, you know, are SPF, but supplements that help minimize sun damage. So if, if you get a sunburn, what to use? And if you have sun damage, like I have, um, and am actively combating, uh, which by the way, I will post a video at some point. It, my friend's just gone. Um, I'll post a video. It's filmed, but I have to edit it of, um, oh, 
exosomes and microneedling. So if you're curious about that, there's on Instagram TV, I have the live uh, part of it, but um, that'll be coming as well. So Ritterak, hey, it's great to see you. So thanks everybody, have a great day and I will touch base with everybody soon. Au revoir.